We already determined how much cooling you really need to keep a 7800X 3D from lighting itself on fire. But what about the biggest 3D chip AMD offers? What about the 7950X 3D? How fat does a cooler really need to be to prevent it from crippling itself into two-digit FPS? The premise for this video is similar to what we did with the other how much cooling videos. We take a CPU, in this case the 7950X3D, then we take a reference performance graph of coolers. This one was created using a 3900X. From there we remove all the values and references to the 3900X and only keep the list of coolers sorted in a decreasing performance order. From there we pick and choose individual coolers, install them and hit the CPU with a full load, in the case of a 7950X3D that's 143 watts in Cinebench, and from there we observe if the cooler is capable of keeping the CPU below TJ Maxx. If the cooler manages to survive, yay, it is on the green side of the list, meaning that it is worthy of cooling down the chip. If it is not, it's going to go onto the naughty list and deemed unworthy. Then we do this process over and over and over again until we find the exact line at which people can later orient their purchasing plans. But this is not an exact value video, nor does the reference graph apply to the 7950X3D. But because the coolers are already oriented in a performance sortation, if cooler A is okay and cooler B is too, well then we can or we are safe to assume that everything in between the two will be too. And that's what we are going to do. Now before we start the thermal paste bukake, cause seriously for these videos I'm going through like five big tubes, anyway the 7950X3D is a chip that doesn't make it easy to assume what coolers will be okay and what not, at, at least not flat out. On one hand, AMD provides a default TEP of 120 watts, which is significantly below the 170 watts that the non-3D 7950X push, which is good, believe me, the okay to use cooler list of the 7950X is brutal, but on the other hand, a 3D chip has a TJ Maxx or maximum operating temperature of only 89 degrees C. So you need to get that number down really, really far before it becomes okay. Anyway, let's start. 143 watts at Cinebench and the mistake of working my way up. No, nope, no, no way and fail. Yeah, you, you see why I go through that many tubes, but it's actually shocking how little some of these actually thermal throttled and it's surprisingly consistent until the Dark Rock Slim, all of them stayed at like 4.6, 4.7 on the CCD that has the, the 3D V cache and that's just like 200 megahertz overall below what we needed to achieve. From there until the Frieza 34 eSports, it went a bit up to like 100 megahertz below what I expected to see. But then, then we tested the Noctia NHD12L and there things started to, to get heated. There it started to jump when I ran the test long enough, but at some point it fell 100 megahertz on both sides. So. For half the time, the NHD12L managed to keep it there, but, you know, room temperature and, and stuff, and it wasn't consistent. And that behavior continued up until the Xilence M906. That one was the, the last stutter. After this, the Freezer 50, that one, that one managed to stop the stuttering and allow the 7950X3D to keep the all core boost clock that I was expecting to see while it's being pecked against that 89 degrees C mark. From there the temperature actually did not go down that fast, the Xilence M705 for example, this one managed to get it down by like 0.1 degrees C at that speed, but from there and especially for the bigger AIOs they kept it a lot lower. 
but with the Frieza 50 we are now at the exact spot at which the good enough list begins on this reference graph. And just to give you some random reference value, with the absolute best AIO we have in house, the Lee and Lee Galahad 2 Trinity performance, we managed to keep it at 84 degrees C. Stock settings, BIOS everything stock, just expo enabled. Of course you will be able to get it a lot lower with curve optimizations and whatnot, but as far as stock performance goes, the best AIO is 84 degrees C. Hot but not too hot. And this leaves us with this list. The red being not good enough and the orange being okay if combined with a good setup and the green is just good to go. Of course, the higher you go, the better your experience will be or your temperature or noise or both. Now at that point another disclaimer, we do all of these with the BIOS set to stock settings and expo. We do not optimize anything, we do not set a negative curve optimizer, this is completely stock and only stock. So the CPU is actually running a lot harder than it potentially has to. But this list is supposed to show off the worst case scenario and give you a recommendation based on only that. So no matter what you do, you should be safe as long as you stay on the green side of this list. You can be a lot safer with some tinkering in BIOS, but as for stock, be in the green and you'll be safe no matter what. Anyway, I think this should be all for today and how much cooling you need for the 7950X 3D. On a side note, we also have a Discord server, so if you want to join, the link is down below. And of course, we still have channel membership, so if you're looking for a good way to sell your soul for an RG poop emoji, that's a pretty good way to go. Additionally, you can rest assured that the income will not only keep the channel afloat, but will also serve to get a crown for the Freezer 50. Being the first one that kept the 7950X3D cool, it's, it kinda deserves one. Anyway, thank you for watching and if you want to continue, have a look at this series where we built the new radiator fan testing machine. It, it was a fun ride. Hope to see you on the next one and bye bye.